Amen. It's uh, good to be back in the house of the Lord. Amen. Uh, thank you for uh, joining us. Uh, once again, it's a blessing to be in the Star Wars home. And, um, it's, a, it's a blessing that God allows us to do this. Yes, Want sir. to um, ask everyone to continue to pray. Uh, with our special uh, invitation for the month of uh, May uh, to help us reach our goal of uh, inviting out 5,000 people. Amen. Amen. And um, people have been responding. Amen. So that's a blessing. Uh, I want to also let everyone know that Reverend Devonshire be here uh, for service next uh, Tuesday next Tuesday, be here for a special service. Uh, so uh, we are excited about that, mm -hmm. amen. And um, he'll be in Barry, he'll be going to West Virginia, and after that, I think he'll be going to New York. So just continue to pray, mm -hmm. amen. We're excited about what God is doing. Yes, sir. But anyway, before we um, teach, um, I, I just want to do to wish my wife a happy birthday today, actually. <laughs> we celebrated it at the church, and today is actually her birthday. So if everybody yeah. would just join in and sing, <laughs> if you don't mind. <laughs> happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Bless you. <laughs> not going to get involved in this age thing. I think we better move along to the Bible. Okay, I'm ashamed. <laughs> <I know you're laughs> Amen. But anyway, it's good to uh, be back and um, we want you to continue to pray. Thank you uh, very much. I want to teach on a, a simple thought or a simple subject, subject of this evening. And I want to talk about being fishers of men being fishers of men. And, um, and and we want to emphasize this throughout the month of May. Really, we should be emphasizing this period. It shouldn't be anything special or new, but, um, but sometimes we need to be reminded. Sometimes God needs to uh, uh, help us to, uh, you know, get a new and a fresh vision for people. And, um, and uh, growing a church is more than just numbers. And even though we do want, we, we have a goal that we want to meet, meet, it is really deeper than that. It's about people. It's about their soul. It's about people being saved. And, and all we're doing is uh, making a way for people to be able to hear the gospel and to provide a way for them to uh, receive the gospel message. That's really what it's about. It's not about getting attention. It's not about one person doing more than the other. It's not about boasting and bragging. It's about souls. That's that's mm -hmm. what it's all about. And that's really what it should be about. Amen. And just giving people an opportunity to learn about the Lord and about salvation and about being saved in Jesus Christ. So I want to uh, read uh, a couple of verses to you, Matthew chapter 4, very familiar, uh, which Jesus, uh, Jesus is always a good place to start when you're doing something. <laughs> I promise you, he's always a good. Matthew 4, 18 and 19. And Jesus walking by the sea of Galilee saw two brethren, Simon called Peter and Andrew his brother, Casting a net into the sea, for they were fishers. They were commercial fishermen. This is how they lived. This is how they provided. This is how they took care of their families, themselves, and met the needs of their personal lives. So if you think that this was just some story that just happened in the Bible, it was a sacrifice for these men when Jesus came by there. Uh, just to think, man, this is how I provide. And for him to come along and in verse 19, and he saith unto them, 
follow me and I will make you fishers of men. Fishers of men. And so what this tells us in our quest and, and in our desire to reach people and care for people, there will be sacrifices involved on some level. It will cost you to care for other people. That it's just where it goes. Now, I don't I don't believe that God will ask of something of us that we're not able to give. I really don't believe that. And I know down through the years we've seen churches, we've seen preachers with all these uh extravagant, you need to do this and you need to do that and God wants you to do this and God wants you to do that and and on and on and on but your sacrifice is your sacrifice. I really believe that. Uh, what Reverend Steele may have to sacrifice, I may not have to sacrifice. What Tim may have to sacrifice, I may, and and, uh, and on and on and on. Uh, what you may have to sacrifice, I may not have to sacrifice, or, or vice versa. You know, some things may mean more to another, but God may say, I want you to put that aside. Because I want you to do this or to do that. And so what I'm trying to tell you is that it's important for you yourself to be saved. It is even a greater sacrifice or a mighty sacrifice to care for others. It, it really is. And it's a, it's a sacrifice that we should welcome. Because it's not for any other reason than for the Lord. And, and when, we, when we realize that, when we take the emphasis off of what we're sacrificing and put the emphasis on who we're sacrificing for, then whatever you're doing will not take precedent over your life. And you will always realize that because God told me to do it, it's going to be okay. I'm going to be okay. My situation is going to be... Do, did you read the rest of the Bible? Um, so... We see Peter in this, right? Did you ever read where Peter went hungry? Did you ever read where Peter never had, didn't have a roof over his head? But Jesus said, come follow me. And I, and I feel the presence of God right now just saying that. And the Spirit of God confirming this with me. And like I said, I don't believe in foolishness. I don't believe God said, come and get... Uh, I'm not saying God said... Put your house on the line. Put this, you know what I'm saying? I'm talking about God. I'm talking about real Bible sacrifice. I'm not talking about foolishness. But when God tells you to do something, it's real, it's sensible, it's honorable, it's pleasing to him. Amen? And so I never read in the Bible where Peter went hungry. I never read in the Bible where he never had anything to eat. Matter of fact, once he was willing to make that sacrifice, his relationship with God elevated and elevated. Now, Jesus had to, to deal with him, which, he, which is sensible in our relationship with God. We all have to be dealt with sometimes, don't we? Jesus had to rebuke him. Jesus had to chastise him and all that. But anyway, so what does it mean to be a fisher of men? To be a fisher of men in the simplest terms means to just simply win people to God, right? This means to share the gospel and to ask them if they want to receive it. It ain't that, it's not that complicated. You know, present the gospel to them and give them the opportunity to respond to it. And we're living in a day and an age to where we need to be more concerned about souls we need to be more concerned about people's welfare and on and on and on. And so, and so God knows. So what are some of the basic uh, things or met methods or principles? Or I want to talk about four things we can do to become fishers of men, okay? To where God can use us to help people, to reach people. And, uh, and, and that's what being saved, now that you're saved, you should want others to be saved. You should want others to share in the goodness of God. You should want others, if you're free, you want others to be free. 
If God delivered you from an addiction, you want others to be delivered from an addiction. If God delivered you from financial hardships and he's taught you how to be do better about your money, do better about your living, do better about your relationships, and on and on and on, then you should want that for other people as well. Man, I, I want to see my family. I want to see my friends. I want to see the people that I talk to. I want to uh, tell them about Jesus. I was sharing with some people over the pulpit. I received an email. I'm not going to go into some long, drawn-out thing from a person that my wife and I pastored some years ago. And they said, we've been looking for you and looking for you and looking for you. We couldn't find you. And uh, we had to go visit her son in the boy's home. He was a wayward and troubled boy. And my wife and I went out to visit him. We took him a Bible. We took him. He was just a teenager back then. We took him a Bible. We didn't know if he was going to keep it. Because you know how teenagers are. We didn't know what he was going to do. But we went there. We ministered to him. And we took him a Bible. And I, I believe. And I. I wrote my name in it, you know, and everything. And he's a grown man now. But since we've been gone and we've come here, um, the family has had devastating losses. I preached the mother's funeral while I was there, but one of the sisters have passed away that we witnessed to since we were there, and her oldest son was killed in a motorcycle accident. So she was... Uh, just been disturbed. She said, I haven't been back to church, this and that, and all these things. But what, what got me was that she said, I couldn't find you. So I went over to his I went over to his house and the Bible was laying on the table. And when I opened the Bible, I saw your name. Uh, soul winning. Yeah. Uh, even years down the line. Amen. Because we went, we took the time to go out there. He kept the Bible. Maybe maybe he's not doing right. Maybe he's not where he should be, but he kept the Bible. Mm -hmm. That means that as long as that Bible is there, one day he might just pick it up. But the mother happened to be over there. She picked it up and saw, and God brought the connection. Yes. Amen. Amen. That's all. You are a connection to other people. All right? So, it does matter. We're not wasting time. We're not wasting time. So the first thing we need to do when we're concerned about souls is that we have to go where they are. We have to go where they are, right? We have to go where people are. You know, it's like I remember uh, my dad, one of my fondest memories of growing up is going fishing with my father. And one of the things that we used to always say, I wonder what, where are they biting? You know, uh, you don't want to just, you don't fish anywhere. You try to find out where they biting at. Uh, I wonder where they are today. Is they in this spot or in that, in that spot? And on and on and on. Well, it is our responsibility to go where people are. All right? Number one, Mark 16 and 15. The Great Commission. And he said unto them, Go ye into what? All the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Amen. Wherever people are, go where they are and, and minister to them and share the gospel with them. We have to be burdened, we have to have a concern. We have to want to see other people reach for God. But that, like I said, that takes sacrifice. That means you got to put time aside. That means you got to uh, forego maybe something that you had planned, whatever the case may be. Serving God and working for God requires sacrifice. You might as well get that in your head. You might as well understand it. All right? Luke chapter 14 and verse 23 tells us, uh, and the Lord said unto his servant, go out into the highways and hedges and compel them to come in that my house 
may be filled. There again, we can't just sit at the church. We can't just sit around. My wife um, have sang this song, and I've heard others. My house is filled, but my fields are empty. Who will go and work for me today? It seems like my, all my children just want to stay around the table, and no one wants to work in my field. Right, and it said, one of the verses says, push away from the table, look out through your window pane. Beyond the house of plenty lies a field of golden grain. There's people out here that need God. There's people out here that are hurting. There's people out here crying out for, for just somebody, uh, for somebody to knock on their door or to just... Uh, whether they're at the store or at the gas station, whatever the case may be, that uh, maybe at an NA meeting or, a, 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 what is, a, a meeting or whatever the case may be that's hurting and that, and that need God, amen? And, and we have to be a tool and an instrument used in the hand of God. You must go where people are if you want to help people for God. He said, go to the highways and the hedges. And then he said, compel them. How do you compel people? How do you convince people to come to God? By what you say many times, and a lot of times with your life too. You got to have the life to back it up. Amen? Mm -hmm. I'm serious. And then, even though this may seem redundant, it's not. Labor and effort. Labor, so we got we got to go where people are, and then we got to put in labor, because helping people and working with people requires commitment, uh, requires dedication. It does. It may cost you a dinner. You may have to take them out to dinner. You may have to buy them a cup of coffee. You may have to forego some free time that you may have and just spend time with, go to the store with them. Just sit down, go over and talk with them. Or whatever the case may be, it, it, it will require something. But the Bible says in Proverbs 11 and 30, the fruit of the righteous is a tree of life. And he that what? Winneth souls is wise. The word winneth means to bring in, to draw in, or to receive. Right? That means that in order to, for people to become a fisher of men, you have to work at it. You have to work at it. You have to give yourself to it. You have, it takes a commitment. It, it's what it is. And then the other part is prayer. It's prayer. We need to pray and work. Pray and work. Prayer is a part of labor and effort. 1 Samuel chapter 12 and verse 23 says, Moreover, as for me, God forbid that I should sin against the Lord in ceasing to pray for you, but I will teach you the good and the right way. In order to do that, in order to be right, and in order to have the right attitude, to work in the right frame of mind, we have to pray. Mm -hmm. God will help us. And many times when you have prayed, God will give you the right words to say. God will give you the right angle to, to go at people. And God will help you with your efforts, amen, to reach people, to say the right thing, to care in, in for them properly and carefully. Amen. To, the, to don't have any selfish motivations. Amen. Soul winning is strictly a God thing. It is a God thing. All right. Catch them. If the number three, before you can clean people, you got to catch them. I've seen and I've noticed this a lot in churches. And I have, I was guilty of this early on in my ministry. Uh, you know, you, you think uh, because people are sitting in church that that's the time you, 
Don't do this. Don't do that. Quit that. Quit this. This is wrong and that is wrong and blah, 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 blah. It's almost like going fishing and you have a fish, you know, you the fish is biting and you put the hook and, the, and, the, and, the, and the, the hook is in their mouth and you're trying to clean them before you get them in the boat. <laughs> it makes no sense. If they're not saved, you can't clean them. Anyway, you can't clean them. God cleans them. Amen. God does a much better job of cleaning people than you do. I promise you that. That's something I had to learn the hard way. I mean, you do your job and you let God do his job. Amen. I really believe that with all my heart because God has a way of touching people. James chapter 5 and verse 20 tells us, let him know that he was converted a sinner from the error of his way shall save a soul from death and shall hide a what? Multitude of sins. Who hides the multitudes of sin? You? <laughs> God does. You do, the, you do the witnessing and you let God do the saving. Amen. And I'm telling you right now, when people really get saved, God knows how to talk to them. God knows how to direct them. He knows how to lead them. Because I'm telling you right now, when I got saved, my pastor didn't have to tell me a whole lot. I already knew I got to quit this. This got to stop. I got to, this, I went home through this. I'll stop doing that. Quit doing. It's amazing how a reality in God will take care of a lot of things. Mm -hmm. You don't have to be worried about a bunch of do's and don'ts. I mean, a lot of times people focus on all that. You know, we don't have to worry about that. The most important thing we need to do is have a real experience with God. Amen. Pray for salvation. Repent of your sins. And let God be real. And by him being real in your life, once he comes into your life, he knows how to tell you what to do. He knows how to guide you. He knows how to direct you. A pastor is not a dictator. A pastor is not somebody that goes around cracking the whip. A pastor is not somebody going around uh, nitpicking people, going around finding fault like a, a, a Holy Ghost police or something like that. That's not how it works. My job is to just preach the word of God. Now, from time to time, God may give me something to talk to you about or share. That's different. But that even that is done in love and in carefulness. I, I'm serious. And, 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 and we learn and we grow in these areas. So, and um, another thing as I uh, get ready to uh, bring this to a close, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10 through 11. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he had done whether it be good or bad. Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we sanctify men. Is, is that what the Bible says? Is that what the Bible says? No, that's not what the Bible says. We persuade men. Right? Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we, what's our job? Persuade people. Go out and what? Compel people. Convince them through your testimony, through your witnessing, and then more importantly, through your life, really. But we are made manifest unto God, and I trust also are made manifest in your consciences. And so I want to finish up with this one. When we have done those three, to become a fisher of men, we leave the results to God. We leave the results. We cannot make people serve God. Pastor Davis used to say something, and at the time it sounded somewhat extreme, but it's true. He said, there are some people, if you put a gun to their head, they're not going to serve God. Serving God is is clearly 
It's something that is between the individual and God. You do your job and you let God do, do his job. Amen. And leave the results to him. I want to finish up by reading Acts chapter 2, verses um, 41 through where I'm going to stop. And I want you to listen to me very carefully. Because as I read this, I believe God. Because it's happening for us. It's happening for us in Pittsburgh. God is moving by his spirit. God is touching people. Acts chapter 2 and uh, verse 41. Then they gladly received the word. They, then they that gladly received the word, what did they do? Receive the word, were baptized, and the same day, the same day, there was added unto them about 3,000 souls. One day. Who's in charge of, of growth? God is. You do what you're supposed to do, and we leave the results to God. And they continued. This thing, most people, after God do something like that, they relax. They let up. Oh, yeah, God really blessed today. I'm going to chill and cut back. But 3,000 was added to the church. What did the next verse say? And they continue steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in what? Prayers. And fear came upon every soul and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles and all believed were together and had all things coming. And sold their possessions and goods and parted them to all men as every man had need. And they continuing daily. Continue. You see, serving God is not a week-to-week -week thing. Serving God is a daily thing. Amen? And they continuing daily with one accord in the temple breaking bread from house to house, did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart. And then we're going to finish with this as we, the fourth part of becoming a fisher of men is leaving the results to God. Verse 47 tells us, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added, to the church daily, such as should be saved. What are we talking about tonight? Fishers of men. God is concerned. God is concerned, and we should be too, about reaching people for the kingdom of God. We appreciate you. We thank you for your time and your attention. And it is our prayer that God will bless you. I thank you for those that are joining us online. We just pray that God touch your heart and touch your life in some way. Uh, let us pray. Faith, would you pray, please? Father, I thank you for this Bible study. Thank you, God, for what we heard tonight. And I just ask and pray that you would help us to hide your word in our hearts and Bring it to our remembrance, Lord, when we need it the most. We thank you and we praise you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen.